Have you ever seen these little uh, calendar sheets? You can print them out, you can track your days, uh, you can write them down in here, or maybe you have a wall calendar. Well, by the end of this video, I'm gonna have you tearing that thing to shreds. Now, before I get started, this video is going to be for students, it's gonna be for entrepreneurs, it's just gonna be for busy people in general. Whoever you are, I'm going to show you how to fully utilize Google Calendar to improve your life and just get more productive overall. All right, so first, let's start by looking at my calendar and kind of showing what I'm doing right now and how I'm using Google Calendar. So what you'll see right off the bat is I have a few things uh, marked out in red. Those are just some invoicing reminders that I have for myself. I created a separate calendar that overlays over the top of this that uh, tells me what days to invoice people. And anywhere where it says subscription or sub, that means that I have got a card on file and I just subscription build them uh, automatically. But anywhere where it says invoice, it's a reminder to send an invoice. So, you know, I kind of ran into an issue where I would forget to send those because I was getting quite a few on my plate and this was a great way to get that handled. Another thing you'll notice is that a lot of these events in the past are grayed out. Now, this is another thing that I'm going to show you guys is to gray out these events. Uh, because this really helps you to kind of focus on the day at hand and just kind of de-stress from everything else that's going on, okay? Uh, and then the next thing you'll notice is that these colors aren't the standard colors that you'll see in Google Calendar. Uh, in Google Calendar, they come with some really basic starting colors, but I have kind of worked around my brand. As you can see, the blues resemble different tasks that I have to do. The greens resemble anything to do with invoicing or money. The pinks, as rare as they are, I think there's only one this month, are reminders. And the black ones are just, you know, your every day-to-day -day sort of events and out-of-office times. And that's kind of how I have used it. Those are the four different calendars that I have utilized so far. What I'm going to do in today's video is start with a fresh calendar here, and I'm going to show you guys a few ways to use the calendar. So first and foremost, tip number one is to use color to color code your different calendar events. So what you can actually do is you can click right here and you can hit add custom color to change the color of your calendar event. So let's say you wanna go with a blue for your day-to-day -day events, like this really bright blue, you could hit save. And let's say for uh, birthdays, maybe you wanted to make that purple or grape, uh, whatever that's called, I think it says grape. Yeah, grape. Uh, and then maybe reminders, we want those to be tangerine or that orange color just so they're easy to see and they're very vibrant and they stick out. And then for day-to-day -day tasks, maybe we want to do a yellow or maybe we want to do like a, like a pink. You could hit save. Uh, pink is too close to birthdays almost, so I think I am going to do a yellow and that looks pretty good. Now, before we get off the topic of colors, I want you guys to head down to the... Uh... Now, before we get off the topic of colors... I want you guys to head down below this video and turn the like button blue if you're enjoying this video so far. Wow, that was cheesy. Tip number two is to use the stock reminders calendar if you aren't already utilizing it. I see a lot of people that just put in events and they just put events for everything. So they just use their normal calendar. Um, but what I recommend is switching it over to reminder and just adding in any reminders that you might have. So this is great for birthdays. Um, so maybe uh, you just put Tom's birthday. I wonder if there are any Toms out there that were born on the 27th. That would be super crazy if there's a Tom out there watching this video that was born on the 27th. Um, but anyways, you would do that and you'd hit annually on July 27th and hit save. Okay, so utilize those reminders. That's, that's one thing that has really saved me a lot of time. And then when you're done, you can just mark it as done and it will cross it out like that, but it will stay right on your calendar. Uh, you can also undo it if you want to make it undone. Now, the world is a crazy place nowadays, so uh, a lot of us are working virtually right now for reasons that I'm not going to say out loud in this video because they will get me demonetized if I'm not careful. But yeah, the world is a crazy place right now in 2020, so you might be working virtually. That being said, you might be working with people from all around the world. And one of the great things that you can do in Google Calendars is go up to your settings section, hit settings, head over to world clock, hit show world clock, and then you can add in some time zones. So maybe you have an Eastern time zone, then maybe you wanna add central, 
Mountain, Pacific, from there just hit back. And what you'll notice is you now have this nice set of times on the left side of your calendar. Uh, and this makes it great for scheduling things, especially if you are on the phone with somebody and you want to schedule in a meeting with them. There's always that awkward sort of, okay, what time is it where you live thing that happens if you know what it's like working virtually. So this is definitely a good feature to implement that doesn't come stock with Google Calendar. You kind of have to dig through the settings to find it. Now, the next thing that you want to do is utilize the task feature. Okay, so tasks are another type of special event that you can use in Google Calendar. And I recommend using these for big things that you have to check off a list. So this is things like maybe bookkeeping, okay? And this goes the same uh, as reminders. It's just a little bit different in that it has a description and it's just, you know, it's more of something that you check off. It's not something that's just a reminder. Oh, it's Tom's birthday. No, we just have to do bookkeeping and this is a reminder to do it sort of, and they, they kind of function the same. But the point is uh, you'd want to put in the tasks for a certain day and then a certain time. And from here, you can add a description. So make sure to clear uh, unnecessary expenses and balance your bank account, things like that. Then you would hit save. And you can also uh, mark these as complete when they're done or mark them as incomplete. If you're enjoying this video so far, please be sure to drop a quick like. I really do appreciate it and it helps this channel out. Now let's get into the next tip. Now the next tip is to enable this brightness decrease on any past events. Now you'll see that if you go over to my calendar, uh, I have this brightness decrease enabled because I get quite overwhelmed if I have like too many things showing and it's too bright in my calendar. So what you can do is you can actually just decrease the brightness of those past events by going over to your settings, hitting settings, going to view options, and making sure that this box right here, reduce the brightness of past events, is checked. Now, once again, we are living in 2020 and a lot of our calls happen over on Zoom. Uh, or Skype or something like that. But in this case, I recommend installing the Zoom Chrome extension for Google Calendar. So just type into Google Zoom Chrome extension for Google Calendar, and it will come up with Zoom Scheduler Chrome extension. And here you're just gonna wanna hit Add to Chrome uh, if you're using Google Chrome. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to introduce a new button to Chrome. So let's say we have a meeting on the 29th, and I want to make it a Zoom meeting. So meeting with Tom and it's going to be a virtual meeting and it's going to be at you know 10 a.m so i would hit make it a zoom meeting and what that's going to do is i'm going to click into here and now it's generated a zoom link where both of us can click on this so if i hit edit and i add a person to this event so if i add tom to this event for instance uh, let's just say tom at tom.com i hit save and send and then invite external guests, which I'm not going to because Tom at Tom.com might be a real person, unfortunately. <laughs> Basically, yeah, just install this Zoom meeting Chrome extension. I hope you guys enjoyed these Google Calendar tips and I hope you get to implement them uh, and really just save a lot of time and keep your calendar in your pocket rather than on your wall. It's a lot more convenient that way. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so that you can get more videos like this and learn more about Google Calendar. And with that, have a productive day. We'll see you in the next one.